for this, this special occasion taking place during the divine occasion of the Patotsa ceremony here at Manuseva Mandir is how to bring Sanatana Dharma into our daily lives. Now, what's important about that is before we even get into that, that question, what do we mean by bringing Sanatana Dharma into our lives? Sitting here this evening, many of us are religious people, we're pious people. And most of us identify as following, adhering to the religion of Sanatana Dharma, or what's called Hinduism. And yet, how much do we really live it? Sure, we come to temple, we take part in the ceremonies, we pray to God, but how much are every minute in every moment of our lives, actually living and breathing the tenets of our tradition. And for those of us who are followers of another religion, how can the tenets of Sanatana Dharma bring us closer to our spirituality of any religion, worshiping God by any name, in any form, in any way? Sanatana Dharma literally means the eternal way of life. It's not meant to be a dogma or some stringent set of, of rules. Sanatana Dharma is more the ras, the essence, the juice that brings the breath of life into our day. It's not one more set of rules to follow, another list for our bathroom window, our bathroom mirrors. It's the essence, the juice, the joy, the breath of life in our lives. So when we talk about bringing it into our daily life, we're not looking at how can we follow a different set or another set of, of stringent rules so as not to upset some very vengeful God. But rather, how can we bring insights, truth, deeply into our lives? so that we become closer to the nurturing, nourishing, benevolent, beautiful, joyful divine who lives both within us and also outside of us. That's the question. Now, someday, Sometime in the future when Pooja Swamiji has more time, maybe we'll come back and we'll have a whole weekend on this topic. Because it really is, even a weekend would be pushing it. Assuming we had to give you breaks for meals and showers and to sleep at night. So it's, it's a huge topic. But tonight, I want to just talk about three, three tenets, three aspects that to me as someone who has been gifted by coming into Sanatana from another tradition that have taught and touched me so deeply and changed my life so much that if we can all really bring at least these three tenets into our lives. Not only can we give ourselves the stamp of being good Hindus, but our lives
lives will change. Our families will change. Our emotions will change. Our relationships will change. And the first of these tenets is the idea that the belief, the concept that God is in everything. If you had to, to sum up the truth of Sanatana Dharma, we'd say, well, it's in our Venus. And if you had to crystallize, distill the essence of the Venus, you'd say, well, those are in the Upanishads. Well, the first line of the Isha Upanishad tells us, Isha Vasyamidam Sarva, Yat Kinchit Jagat Yam Jagat. It means everything in the world, in the universe, is pervaded by the divine. There is nothing, no one, nowhere that is not pervaded by God. Okay. So we come to temple, we pray to God, we feel God. And then what happens? We go out. And we feel God a little less. Most of us here have probably been in the situation where you're on the way to temple, or you're on the way to a katha, or you're on the way to a meditation class, or a puja, or a yoga class, and you're stuck in traffic. Something's made you late. Now you're frustrated. Now our entire nature becomes, get out of my way. I've got to get to temple. I've got to get to puja. I've got to get to katha. I've got to get to my meditation class. I'm late for yoga. We're furious at the other drivers on the freeway, or our family members who made us late, or the checkout clerk at the grocery store who made us late, or whoever set these red lights that for God's sakes they don't change on time, or whoever thought of doing construction at this time of year. Why don't they tell us? But if Isha Vasti with them, Sarvam, if everything is pervaded by God, then that same divine to whom I'm going to worship in the temple, that same divine whose glories we're going to sing in Katha, that same divine upon whom I'm going to meditate in my class or unite with in my yoga, do they not exist in the drivers of these cars around me? In my family member who made me late? In the checkout clerk? In the poor construction guys trying to fix these roads before the snows come? So suddenly, wherever we are, that becomes temple. There's temple here, and then there's temple outside of here. And then it reminds us that it's not okay to lie, to cheat, to step on people's heads in order to get ahead. And then to come to temple and perform Abhishek or Arati or give nukapura to the deities, or give some nice big dakshina, and think that somehow we're going to get punya for that, and God's going to forget. That we stepped on his head in the form of his devotee out there in order to get that promotion, or that raise, or that place. Isha vasimidam sarva. God is everywhere. So even if I don't necessarily make it tonight to the temple, to the katha, to the meditation class, to the yoga class, certainly we should try. That's important for other reasons. But maybe tonight, maybe tonight my puja is in seeing God in that checkout clerk or in that construction work or in these drivers, or in my family members. Lord Krishna reminds us of that. He tells us, he who sees me in all, 
He is the one with right vision. He is the one who sees correctly. So it's not easy. It's a challenge. It's a lot easier to see God in a deity. The vibrations in the temple are beautiful. The deity doesn't talk back. Doesn't leave its room untidy. Doesn't cut us off on the freeway. Doesn't make us late. Doesn't tell us to shut up. It's easier. But the beautiful gift of this tradition is that it reminds us over and over and over again, I am not only here. Come here, charge your batteries, connect with me, and then go out and see me everywhere.